it's a pleasure to be speaking to a friend, uh, Mahmoud Jan Mohammed, uh, the CEO and MD of Serena Hotels. Serena Hotels is not only in Africa, but also in Pakistan, Afghanistan, and now Mahmoud was just mentioning um, a, an, a, another hotel in France as well. Mahmoud, it's a great pleasure. You're the eminent squeeze of the tourism industry. We've known each other when I was a little boy. And you were managing Mombasa, which I still remind people about. Yes. Mahmoud, you know, this is an opportunity for us to just take a view on where we are in the tourism industry in this region. Um, obviously, we've had some serious challenges. Um, how would you characterize the situation as we find it now? I think in terms of, if I talk East Africa, um, we obviously, um, Kenya has faced a very challenging uh, two and a half years. And I think a lot of people uh, assume that uh, the challenges Kenya is facing is due to the recent advisories. But to be honest, last year was a, was a tough year um, because we had elections and there was a lot of hype negative media reports before and after elections. Uh, then unfortunately we had the Westgate attack which also did not help and I kept saying at that time that the Westgate attack would impact the year 2014. Mm -hmm. So we were already going to be facing a challenging year 2014. Unfortunately the advisories uh, in 2014 have really been the final nail in the coffin. Uh, so for Kenya, it's been a challenging year. On a positive note, however, um, even last year, um, during the migration season, uh, the Americans continued to come. So I think that they've the been coming even now. Oh, yes. Mm. And they have supported Kenya in year 2013 and 2014. Uh, from middle of July, mm -hmm. and we hope it's going to continue till October. So properties in the Mara mm -hmm. and the Nakuru Laikipia region are actually at this moment in time doing well after a tough first six months. I think the real negative impact has been felt at, on the Kenya coast, yes. and coast Mombasa coast. is really going through a very tough time. Mm -hmm. And we should not forget that parks like Savo and Amboseli mm. are both very reliant on the Mombasa market. Mm. Um, I think, you know, one should also not uh, forget that coastal tourists also go to the Mara and Mount Kenya region. So that has been a, um, um, a very tough blow on Kenya. In Tanz on Tanzania, for the first time, uh, or the first six months, we did see a little downturn, mm. and the reason was, uh, uh, there were three reasons basically. One was the fact that the number of safaris were a combination of Kenya and Tanzania. So as soon as people saw Kenya, they did not book those integrated safaris. Uh, fortunately, we took proactive action and that changed for the second half of the year. And from July, Tanzania is actually recording solid business. Mm. Uh, the other reason that I think Safari in East Africa took a, took a hit uh, was the fact that the South African Rand uh, mm. weakened by 30%, and they contract mm. their tourism product in their, their currency. So effectively, you know, they, they, they became 30% cheaper. cheaper. Mm. So that was, uh, you know, another reason why uh, East Africa mm. did go through a tough time. I think the third reason was, which was very Kenya related, was in September last year, mm. government imposed 18% VAT on tourism services, yes. which affected tour operators and very unfortunately on park entrance fees. Mm. So to give you a real example, the Serengeti charges $60 uh, park entry fee mm. and Amboseli charges $90. Wow. So uh, we're priced, uh, we're priced very poorly. Very poorly. And, and you know, unfortunately, and this is what we've pointed out to government, 
EU regulations do not uh, empower tour operators to charge uh, levies and taxes once they've sold a holiday mm -hmm. without giving uh, I think it's six months notice to the client. So these costs can't be passed through? No, so they have absorbed them. Mm. And what happens then is that, um, you know, suppliers of business then say, well, I'm not going to lose $30 per client mm. per day, and I'm going to offer an alternative destination. Mm. And to me, this was uh, uh, an incorrect move, even if he wanted to do it. Mm. Uh, there should have been uh, a notice period, uh, and perhaps that would have been received, uh, you know, uh, well. Uh, Tanzania, on the other hand, because of the East African community, also were to impose the same. Mm. And as soon as they gauged um, feedback from major suppliers of business, they have suspended introduction of VAT. So they, were, they reacted quickly? Very quickly. They didn't even implement it. Mm. They had it on paper. Mm. It was approved by Parliament. Mm. Uh, the industry reacted, like we did in Kenya. Uh, and um, it was debated again in Parliament. And the last decision was about three months ago, where they said, OK, let's suspend it till the end of this year, and we will relook at it. Mm. So I think, you know, those three reasons, it's not just the recent advisories yes. and the so-called evacuation of British tourists. Which, was that an evacuation? I mean, you know, it came under a lot of sort of reinterpretation. The High Commissioner told me that was a decision made by the tour operators yes. who were unable to insure the tourists in Mombasa at that time. Is that correct? That's what the tour operators uh, claim, but it is true. It wasn't a British government uh, requirement. If you ask me, uh, I think it was more a commercial decision mm. because they were unable to sell their charters. Yes. Uh, they were losing money on the charters flying into Mombasa. This was a perfect way of them disengaging from their charter commitment mm. uh. under force majeure. Mm. Interesting. So, in my opinion, it was a commercial decision because it's never happened mm. before. Uh, the insurance of the clients who were there was mm. still valid. Mm. Um, and for them to evacuate sent a very incorrect message. Mm. Which was actually spun very incorrectly. It was yes. sort of set up, yes. set off a lot of panic. Yes. So, looking, so, that East Africa perspective, Coastal tourism, obviously the soft underbelly of it mm -hmm. all, it seems mm -hmm. to be what you're telling me. Mm -hmm. When does that recover in the most optimistic scenario? I think uh, my feeling, by the way, one other factor that, that is important to note is that we also have presence in uh, East African cities. Yes. So we do have uh, a fairly strong corporate market. Yes. And um, you know, on the corporate front, mm. um, for example, our Nairobi Hotel yes. for the last six months has done pretty well. Mm. So there is a fair amount of corporate activity. Yes. Is, is that continuing? Is that, is, that, is that robust? Is that continuing? It, there's been a slight softening in the recent past yes. uh, for Nairobi hotels. Mahmoud, there's all this excitement about Kenya being the gateway, the hub. Are you seeing that translate into uh, beds uh, in, in Nairobi, for example? You know, <laughs> there has been a, there's been a lot of hype. If you look at Nairobi, there is no doubt that the market has grown, mm. but uh, it is not growing at the same pace as supply of new rooms. Ah, because there's been a lot of supply now. Yes, and, and there has been a lot of supply. And if you look at some other hotels in the Central Business District, mm. for example, they have recorded um, occupancies of between 35, 40 percent, mm. which is of concern. Yes. So there is this hype that um, has been created and there are more rooms coming into Nairobi. And I do worry mm. that supply of business is not uh, keeping pace with the, with the overdevelopment. We should not forget mm. 
that Mombasa went through a similar situation mm. where after two boom years, everybody built hotels. Mm. And we got into a situation where we created an oversupply. We became a charter-reliant mm. destination. Uh, so, and you know, sometimes I think the media in Kenya gets it wrong. Uh, I, it really, I'm amazed that they keep talking about international brands coming mm. into Kenya, mm. which mm. is a, which is an indication mm. of how robust this market is. Well, with the greatest respects to the international brands, uh, they are only management companies. Mm. The developers are local Kenyan entrepreneurs. Who are putting their money to work, yeah. And for a management company, I also have management projects, uh, management contracts. We take we will not necessarily just take any project. And I, if I did that, I would have troubled the size of my company. Mm. Uh, we will only take management contracts of properties that are strategically important mm. and that we truly believe we can make a success. Um, so, you know, when international brands come in here, the day they sign a management contract, mm. uh, that's the day they start earning money. Uh, it is not because they have, they, you know, they're not putting any money in. They haven't got the real skin in the game, like you have. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, so Nairobi, I think, you know, whilst for us, and I think for a select number of other hotels that have done well, mm. um, but we see that softening. Uh, and, you know, don't forget that it's not just the corporate market that Nairobi is reliant on. We have the conference, the meeting market, mm. and when there are advisories, it puts everyone off. Those conferences and meetings go out of the window. Mm. If you have business here, or you want to, you're working on a contract here, you will come regardless of advisories or not, because business continues. But when you have conferences, we've had recent examples where a conference from Nairobi was moved to Dar es Salaam. Mm. We had one two months ago where a conference from Nairobi was moved to Kigali, mm. and this is real. And Kigali, and so just if I can just follow on from there, who, uh, where can this business transfer? You know, is there a risk like you're describing going to Dar? Who is best positioned to pick up the pieces in the region? Do you think, if anyone? I think, I think um, certainly in terms of NGOs mm. um, and where there are. Um, <coughs> diplomatic meetings or funded by uh, foreign governments. I think Kigali certainly enjoys a lot of goodwill. Mm. Uh, so Kigali is a beneficiary. Yes. And this year we've had a record six months. Because I was there two weeks ago and I stayed in your hotel and I noticed two things. Uh, a convention center which looked to me very modern mm -hmm. And then the security, Mahmoud. Oh, I mean, I was I walked back to the hotel at two in the morning. Yes, absolutely. And it was just as if it, you, I was out in the street in a Western city. Yes. So that so that sort of made me yes. really think. And Uganda, yes, Kampala is also mm. perceived and is a very secure city. Mm. So Kampala is another, another recipient. Uh, Dar es Salaam for uh, Dar es Salaam, and we've had some business move. So there is that danger. Uh, obviously, we should not forget that in some cases, you know, we are in an international arena. So yes. Johannesburg, Dubai uh, can all be recipients of uh, that business. So I think in terms of Nairobi, um, you know, things are, are fine. Um, you know, uh, it's still positive. I must also mention that uh, Whilst there has been a you know a serious drop in 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 uh, the European leisure market because they used to uh, come and really support hotels over weekends mm. when traditionally our business is very low because the corporate market mm. doesn't travel mm. uh, or they travel out our our peak days are some you know our Sunday Monday Tuesday mm. Wednesday and Thursday Friday Saturday all the hotels in Nairobi take a dip. And we used to rely on the leisure market. Mm. But in some cases, because of perception, yes. they are bypassing Nairobi. Mm. In some cases, if they're going into Tanzania, they'll arrive at Jomo Kenyatta, go straight to Wilson and fly out. 
In some cases, I think the recipients are Naivasha mm. uh, and towns that are closer to Nairobi, and they mm. start off their safari uh, immediately from Jamunkiniata. Mahmoud, coming to the Serena hotels, right? I mean, you know, you are a diversified mm -hmm. uh, uh, hotel group. Mm -hmm. You've got hotels, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, your magnificent hotel, which I adore, which is in Maputo, mm -hmm. which one day I hope will also be part mm -hmm. of uh, the listed company. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this diversification surely gives you some strength in such an environment, does it not? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, you know, good example, and I forget, uh, you know, when we first integrated Tanzania into Kenya, um, I think it was 2009 uh, when Tanzania, Kenya, went through a tough time and Tanzania performed. Mm. Uh, 2010, uh, it was reversed, Kenya performed and Tanzania went through a little bit of a, a, a tough period. So. You know, uh, the fact that the public company today mm. has owns 100% of Tanzania, mm. Kenya, mm. Dar es Salaam, which is our new acquisition, mm. we only invested 20% in Dar es Salaam because we, we wanted to be mature before we integrated. Mm -hmm. Last year, we integrated 65% of Kampala yes. into the public company, which is helping us mm -hmm. significantly now. Rwanda, we own 20% of Rwanda. I think in a three to five year span, mm -hmm. our objective is to integrate Uganda fully, Rwanda fully, mm -hmm. um, Dar es Salaam perhaps partly, mm -hmm. and eventually Polana, which is also going through some redevelopment. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing some real estate development Are there. You? Yeah, you're, you're building on the property. No, well, it's we've got a lot of land there, yes. and uh, we already have some villas that yes. we that are in serious demand. Yes. So we are adding to that. Wow. And uh, we are also going to be uh, redoing the rooms in the Polana Mar. Mm. So there's quite a lot happening, and as soon as you know, those companies are mature, we will integrate them into the public company. So that strategy has worked for us. Geographically, any other places you're looking at? We have a project in Burundi, mm. uh, which, um, you know, we won a tender for what is the hotel source to Neil. Mm. And I've been in discussions with government, uh, and I think they have accepted uh, our our condition that we would only invest in uh, the property mm. after their elections in June 2015. Yes, a little bit of uncertainty yes. around that. So Burundi we're looking at. We have, um, we have inquiries at the moment from um, one or two developers in Addis mm. Ababa. Uh, we're looking Which at. Which a lot of people are getting excited about. Yes. Particularly yes. the business people I see too. Yes. And you know, as I said earlier, we are not necessarily just a management company. You know, we we are long-term players. Yes. And we like to, unlike some of the international brands who will not invest equity mm -hmm. in a project, only manage. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why you sometimes see a number of these management uh, contracts changing hands. Yes. We've seen that a number of uh, in East Africa. Um, you know, we'd like to take an equity stake, mm. so that also, you know, we make sure that we do all the due diligence because we can't afford not mm. to. And uh, that that property has to be strategically important for us and will contribute positively to the public company. And, you know, a good example is Kampala today. Mm. It's uh, giving us handsome returns. Mm. Um, the Rwanda, um, I think, eventually will do the same. Mm. So uh, let me now go to the results, your half-year results. Mm -hmm. When I looked at them, I was quite impressed because I think your revenues were down really marginally. Mm -hmm. You had a seven billion handle on both the previous year and this year. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, the profit came down, but I mean, you know, the headline figure, I think, 
veiled a, a pretty muscular performance, I thought, mm -hmm. given the circumstances. Um, uh, how do you feel about about the chain right now in this situation and about those results you posted and looking forward on the earning side? I think, you know, um, we have over many years demonstrated that we are not just looking at short-term results. Um, we are long-term players. We are here to stay. And, uh, for example, I could have improved my six-month performance mm. If I had put, for example, uh, some of our capital projects mm. or its essential maintenance um, mm. during a downturn period mm. on the back burner, mm. uh, we could have perhaps had a knee-jerk re reaction and panicked and made people redundant. Mm. We don't do that. You know, we believe that our company must be built to last. Mm. And a good example is in the la over the last 12 months, when Kenny has been through a tough period, we have done significant works 